chemistry lecture number five, dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is a method of converting measurements from one type of unit into another. So let's say we measure something in centimeters and we want to convert it into meters. So let's do a problem where we convert 72 centimeters into meters. And to start out, uh, we need to be cognizant of a certain equality. If we're going to convert meters to centimeters, we need to know how many centimeters make a meter. So 100 centimeters equals one meter. And we're just going to keep that little fact in the back of our head as we uh, roll along. All right, here's how we'll start out. If I multiply a measurement times one, you haven't changed it. It's the same measurement. All right, and if I divide it by one, it's still the same measurement. Now, let's suppose instead of multiplying by 1, I multiplied it by a fraction, like 3 over 3. Well, I'm still multiplying it times 1. If you have the same thing on top and the same thing on the bottom, it's 1, so it's the same thing. And how about if we took this a little bit further? How about uh, 72 centimeters over 1 times... Uh, R over R. Well, it doesn't matter if it's numbers or letters. As long as you have the same thing on top and the same thing on the bottom, it's still equal to 1. Um, I could make it, you know, 72 centimeters over 1 times uh, dollar sign over dollar sign. It'd still be the same. You haven't changed it. You're still multiplying it times 1. Now, since 100 centimeters equals one meter. If I were to write this as a fraction, if I were to write one meter over a hundred centimeters, this would be equivalent to one. Because you have the same thing on top and the same thing on the bottom. One meter is the same thing as a hundred centimeters. So, if I did 72 centimeters over one times one meter over 100 centimeters, I would still be multiplying it times 1. I haven't changed what the measurement is, but I will be changing the units. Notice here you have centimeters on top and centimeters on the bottom. Remember, anytime you multiply fractions, if you have the same thing on top and the same thing on the bottom, you can cancel them. So centimeters cancel. And what we end up with is 72 meters over 100. And then 72 divided by 100 is going to be 0.72 meters. And that's our answer. All right. So let me uh, explain the steps that we uh, used in dimensional analysis to convert a value. So write the equality you need to use. In the previous problem, we needed to know that 100 centimeters equals 1 meter. Uh, write the measurement you want to convert as a fraction. Well, we were given 72 centimeters, and to make it a fraction, I just divided it by 1. All right. Write the equality as a fraction with the units you want to cancel at the appropriate location, either top or bottom. So I took uh, the equality 100 meters equals, or I'm sorry, 1 meter equals 100 centimeters, and I wrote it as a fraction, uh, 1 meter over 100 centimeters. I had centimeters on the bottom for a very specific reason. I wanted it to cancel. Cancel units on top and bottom, multiply and divide the numbers. So um, what we had is 72 centimeters over 1 times uh, 100 centimeters on the bottom and a meter on top. So I canceled the units on the top and the bottom. And then I multiplied and divided by the numbers. So 72 divided by 100 is 0.72 meters. All right. So those are the basic steps. So we're going to be following these steps for a series of problems. So let's try one. Let's convert 2.5 days to hours. All right, so we need to know that uh, the equality, one day is 24 hours. All right, so that's the equality we're going to use to convert uh, days into uh, hours. All right, let's see. So here's the measurement we want to convert. We'll write it as a fraction, 2.5 days over one. Okay. Now what we'll do is 
I have days on top, I want to get rid of it, so I need to put days on the bottom. I'm going to write this equality as a fraction with days on the bottom so it cancels with the days on top. So this is going to be 24 hours over one day. All right. Days cancel. 2.5 times 24 is 60 hours. And there's our answer. All right. Let's try another one. Convert seven days to minutes. I'm throwing you a little bit of a curveball here. The way we're going to have to solve this is we're going to have to go from um, days to hours to minutes. So there are several equalities we need to know. We need to know that one day is 24 hours, and we need to know that uh, one hour is 60 minutes. Okay, so here we go. We write the number we want to convert as a fraction, seven days. So I'm going to write seven days over one. And then the first step is I'm going to go from days to hours. I have days on top. I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to have some fraction here with days on the bottom so that these cancel. So here's days. I'm going to put days on the bottom and 24 hours on top. Days on the bottom so these cancel and then 24 hours there. All right. Not quite done yet. We've gone from days to hours. Now we want to go from hours to minutes. I have hours on top. I want to get rid of it. So I need hours on the bottom so that it'll cancel. I have one hour equals 60 minutes. I'll put one hour on the bottom and 60 minutes on top. Okay. Days cancel. Hours cancel. And now our answer is going to be in minutes. Um, 7 times 24 times 60. That works out to be uh, something close to, well, it turns out to be 10,080. minutes. Okay? Let's try another one. I'm going to throw you another curveball. Convert 90 kilometers per hour into meters per minute, given that 1,000 meters equals uh, one kilometer. So, for this problem, looks like we're going to be converting kilometers into meters but we're also be, going to be converting hours into minutes. All right, so we have uh, two sets of equalities uh, that we need to establish. Um, we have the first, 1,000 meters equals one kilometer, and then hopefully you remember that uh, one hour is the same as 60 minutes. Okay. Write our value that we want to convert as a fraction. Well, in a sense, it's already been given to us as a fraction. 90 kilometers divided by hours. So, 90 kilometers per hour. Okay. So, the first thing I'm going to convert is I'm going to convert kilometers to meters. All right. So, I have kilometers on top. I want to get rid of it, so I want kilometers on the bottom. So here's our equality that we're going to write as a fraction. Kilometers is going to go on the bottom, and 1,000 meters goes on top. So kilometers will cancel, and we'll end up with meters. So we've done the first part. We've converted kilometers to meters. Now we want to convert hours to minutes. I have hours on the bottom, and I want to get rid of it. To cancel the hours on the bottom, I'm going to need to put hours on top. I've got one hour is 60 minutes, so I'm going to put an hour on top and 60 minutes on the bottom. All right. Kilometers cancel. Hours cancel. My answer is now in meters per minute. So 90 times 1,000 gives me 90,000 meters divided by 60 minutes. 90,000 divided by 60 gives me 1,500 meters 
per minute. So in one minute, our object travels 1,500 meters, and that's pretty fast. Okay, one more. Convert 12 liters per hour into gallons per minute, given that one liter is 0.264 gallons. Let me rewrite that so you can see it. One liter equals 0 0.264 gallons. And then I guess the other equality we're going to use is hours to minutes. So one hour equals 60 minutes. All right, here we go. Let's see, 12 liters per hour. Let's see, oh, let me write out the overview of how we'll uh, solve this. Looks like we're gonna go from uh, liters to gallons, and then we'll also convert hours to minutes. Okay, anyway. Let's see, I've got liters on top. I wanna to get rid of it. So I need to have liters on the bottom. Here's the equality we'll use. I'll put a liter on the bottom and 0 0.264 gallons on top. All right, so we've done the first step. We've converted liters to gallons. Now we wanna convert hours to minutes. So I have hours on the bottom here and I wanna get rid of it. So I need to put hours on top. One hour is 60 minutes, so one hour is 60 minutes. Okay, liters cancel, hours cancel. We're left with gallons per minute. So 0.246 divided by 60, that gives you 0 0.0528 gallons per minute. And if you want to write it in scientific notation, you can write 5.28 times 10 to the negative 2 gallons per minute. Okay, so those are the basics of factor labeling. And if you plan to have any type of career in the sciences, you need to learn how to do this method. I know that you could probably do these conversions uh, using... Algebra, algebraic uh, methods, but factor labeling makes things easier. Uh, in the future, there's gonna be these long conversions uh, where you're gonna have like four fractions uh, to do some uh, pretty messy conversions in the future. So learn how to do this by uh, factor labeling. All right, if you need a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number five on dimensional analysis. Thanks for watching.